Pre-order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book project, The Go-Go Offense by Brennan Marion. Now, Coach Marion is the offensive coordinator at William & Mary and takes you through the ins and outs of the most explosive offense that's lighting up the college football fields and scoreboards in the process. You can pre-order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Now, the release of the Go-Go Offense book is August 25th. Welcome to Football Game Plan, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is your producer today. It's the summertime and preseason is just around the corner in the NFL. And we'll get you ready for the upcoming 2019 NFL season as we preview the Cleveland Browns. Now, as we kick off the season preview, let us take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. In Cleveland, the hype train has been running at full speed this offseason. Adding superstar wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. is a big reason why the Browns have gotten so much attention since last season. His pairing with Jarvis Landry and Baker Mayfield, as well as Kareem Hunt, will certainly provide explosiveness to an already impressive offense. Can they live up to the, all the media hype and make the playoffs in 2019? Cleveland will definitely be one of the teams to watch next season. The offense has gotten most of the attention this offseason, but the defense certainly deserves some as well. Olivier Vernon was a pro bowler in 2018 with the New York Giants, and he was acquired by the Browns in a trade for guard Kevin Zeitler. The Browns also got one of the steals of the draft when they selected Greedy Williams in the second round, and also former Alabama linebacker Mack Wilson is expected to play a big role in coverage as the Browns lost Jamie Collins to the Patriots. Baker Mayfield was a top pick in the 2018 draft. Though he didn't start the first two games of the season last year, he started the next 14. In those 14 games as a full-time starter, he threw for 3,725 yards and 27 touchdowns, breaking the touchdown record set by Peyton Manning in 1998. He was a standout player as a rookie, and in his first year as a full-time starter, he'll look to improve on his impressive rookie season. It'll be interesting to follow his progression in 2019 as he tries to lead the Browns to the playoffs. The Browns' backfield will be interesting to follow in 2019. Nick Chubb led the team in rushing in 2018 with 996 yards. He also tallied eight touchdowns in his nine starts, and behind him in the backfield is Duke Johnson, who's looking to be traded, and also Kareem Hunt, who's been suspended eight games for a domestic violence incident. After week eight, Hunt will rejoin the team and look to return to his form with the Chiefs, where he was the NFL's leading rusher in 2017. It's time to put this team under the microscope and go position by position to see where they stand as we head into the 2019 season. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball at the quarterback position. Baker Mayfield was as good as advertised last year for the Cleveland Browns, bringing much needed stability to a position that had been unstable for quite some time. Now where Mayfield can continue to grow his game is in the ball security department. Mayfield tossed an NFL rookie record 27 touchdown passes last year, but he also tossed 14 interceptions. I think the touchdown number may even creep up between 30 and 35 this season. And if he can cut that interception number down to between seven and 10, he would have made big steps forward in the progression department in my opinion. Now depth is a concern behind Mayfield as their second string QB is Drew Stanton, a longtime veteran. I would expect free agent signing Gary Gilbert to outperform him in preseason as he was a top quarterback in the Alliance of American Football this past winter. If the staff values Stanton's impact with Mayfield, then make him a coach and keep the better and younger player in Gilbert. Here is where I'm most excited about the Cleveland Browns this upcoming season. Their backfield is tremendous. They legit go three deep in the backfield. And if we're talking spades here, you can make a case for four and a possible. And that fourth and a possible I speak of is Dontrell Hilliard and free agent to Ernest Johnson, another Alliance of American football player who thrive during the winter. But the legit three are Nick Chubb, Duke Johnson, and Kareem Hunt, who will serve an eight-game suspension to begin the season. Now, Chubb nearly missed 1,000 yards last year as a rookie, and while he may not get there again this season, considering what they'll do when Hunt returns, they'll probably split time, but I do believe his yards per carry will still hover around a very healthy 4.8 to 5.1 yards a carry. I feel as though it's important for the Browns to figure out a way to both utilize and keep Duke Johnson around because of what he potentially brings to the table as a game day mismatch. The running game is one aspect of this Browns team that you don't have to worry about. The big splash the Browns made this offseason was bringing in former New York Giant wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. He gives Mayfield yet another explosive threat out there 
on the perimeter in addition to Antonio Callaway. Beckham is much more explosive, but he's just looking to get back to playing football again with no worries about what's going on with his contract and what's going on outside of the playing field. Pro bowler Jarvis Landry led a team in both receptions and yards last year and should thrive alongside Beckham as well. Landry in the slot in between Beckham and Callaway should find himself open a lot over the middle of the field. Now the Browns have good depth here with Rashard Higgins who was a favorite target of Baker Mayfield when he came into the lineup and the battle will be between a bevy of guys for the fifth and sixth spots on the roster. One name to keep an eye on in that regard will be Jalen Strong. At tight end, David Njoku has the physical traits that you want at the position. He started to play a lot better last season from a consistency standpoint. Now, there are some good names here per se backing him up, but not a lot of production and consistency. Orson Charles is essentially your fullback H-back on the roster. Seth the Valve and Demetrius Harris are both really talented players, but the Valve has struggled to stay healthy and Harris has struggled with consistency. So that could leave the door open for undrafted rookie free agent Steven Carlson out of Princeton to actually make the roster. Up front, the Browns look pretty solid across the board. Obviously, second year player Austin Corbett will be expected to raise his level of play at right guard as he steps in as the unquestioned starter along the offensive line. Cleveland got solid play last year from former first round pick Greg Robinson at left tackle and Chris Hubbard at right tackle. And both center JC Treader and left guard Joel Petonio are as solid and as consistent as they come. Depth can be considered solid here as well with Brian Witzman coming over via free agency, Kendall Lamb, and Eric Cush. It will be interesting to see where six-round pick Drew Forbes out of Southeast Missouri State ends up position-wise as he can play both guard and tackle. And here is how I graded out the Browns' offensive units. The Browns are as deep along the defensive line as they are at running back, in my opinion. This group has a chance to really shine this year and take off. Cleveland already has two foundation pieces in defensive end Miles Garrett, who's a perennial pro bowler, and Larry Ogunjobi at defensive tackle. But this offseason, they were able to add both Olivier Vernon and Sheldon Richardson to the mix. And I like the two high energy guys in Chris Smith and Anthony Zetto. Both are excellent in situational roles. The Browns also have good depth on the inside with Carl Davis and Trayvon Coley. The wild card of the group is second year player Chad Thomas, who they drafted in the third round of the 2018 draft out of Miami. Keeping the rush fresh is how you keep the rush both effective and productive, and Cleveland should expect both to be true this year. The linebacking core doesn't have that same luxury of depth as the defensive line, but they do have two foundation pieces, though, in both Christian Kirksey and Joe Schobert. And we'll see if Jannard Avery can elevate his production this year and become that third foundation piece. I think he's going to do it. He's a very good player that made his presence felt whenever he was on the field last season. In the draft, the Browns went with matchup ability with their third and fifth round picks in Sion Takitaki out of BYU and Mac Wilson out of Alabama. Both guys could figure in a sub-package role this upcoming season. On the corners, the Browns have two really excellent prospects in Denzel Ward and rookie Greedy Williams out of LSU. Now, Ward was a pro bowler last year as a rookie, picking off three passes while breaking up another 11 and was in on five TFLs. Now, imagine a player with the same skills as Ward, but three inches taller, and that's Greedy Williams. And while he may not have the same tackling ability as Ward, he does have the same man-to-man -man skills and his ability to pick off the ball. Now, there will be a battle for the nickel spot as Terrence Mitchell and TJ Carey will vie for that opportunity. And I like Carey slightly more because of his ability versus the run. Mitchell has better mirror and match skills and coverage, and both will see the playing field a lot this season for Cleveland. At safety, the Marius Randall turned in a solid year in his first season with the Browns. He's a true playmaker in my opinion, and he should be in position to make more plays as the team brought in veteran safety Morgan Burnett in the offseason. Now, Burnett has top-notch football IQ and would allow new defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes the freedom to move Randall all around the secondary. Eric Murray, Jermaine Whitehead, and rookie Sheldrick Redwine out of Miami provide solid depth here as well. And here's how I grade out the Browns' defensive units. Potentially, the Cleveland Browns have one of the more explosive offenses in the NFL, let alone the AFC. And I'm going to show you how they can utilize their personnel. Let's say this is later on in the season where you can get all three of their talented tailbacks on the field at the same time with two of their more explosive wide receivers in Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. I'm going to show you what I am talking about. So let's just fast forward to the, to the latter part of the season where Kareem Hunt comes back. Now you have the opportunity to use Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, and hopefully he's still on the roster because I think he's a big part of this offense. It could be a big part of this offense in uh, Duke Johnson right there in the backfield. Defensive personnel sees three backs come onto the field. 
instinctively they'll say, okay, well, this is a run. And uh, so we can keep our base personnel on the field, which is why you see four backers on the field. But we know Duke Johnson is more of a threat as a receiver. And that's why this is a situation where you can have a, a great mismatch which, uh, with a guy like Johnson going deep down the field. So let's say we're gonna put Odell Beckham Jr. here to clear out space. What we're gonna do is run him post corner. Hopefully pulling two guys away, getting him out, giving Baker Mayfield a potential big play deep down the field. And what we're gonna do with Jarvis Landry, we're gonna work him up over the middle of the field. We know he's a bully over the middle of the field and will do a good job in catching the ball in traffic and is savvy after the catch to make things happen and pick up yards and chunks. So we're gonna open reverse uh, Mayfield out here and set up shop in the pocket right outside of the guard or inside the guard in the center, giving him a good platform because we're gonna launch this ball back across the field to Duke Johnson. Now how are we gonna do that? We're gonna send him in motion and right when he gets to the guard, he's gonna snap the football Gonna get those linebackers sucked in on watching what's going on. We're gonna leak Nick Chubb out in the flat. Fake to Kareem Hunt, who's gonna come up here and block. Duke Johnson still runs across and is taking it right down the rail. Giving Baker Mayfield a chance to set up here on the left. Tossing the football back across the right, where he's gonna either be matched up on a linebacker or a safety. And we know Duke Johnson is such a good receiver and has a chance to make that catch and make plays like that routinely within his offense, which is why I'm excited to see how Freddie Kitchens incorporates him in the offense. And I hope he's still here uh, for the latter part of the season when they get all three of those guys back in the fold, or get you know Kareem Hunt back in the fold to go along with Nick Chubb and also uh, Duke Johnson. So this is a potential dangerous offense for the Browns, one that could put up a lot of points in the NFL this season. The Browns have positioned themselves as a team that have a great chance to be both explosive on offense as well as on defense. And I'm going to show you how their personnel, their newly added personnel on the defensive side, really helps echo that point home by applying pressure. Look at what we have here. It's just, it's remarkable to see what the Browns have done as far as building their roster. Larry Ogunjobi right here, Sheldon Richardson, Miles Garrett. Olivier Vernon, Jannard Avery in this particular set because I like his ability also to get pressure off the corner. We have Christian Kirksey and we're going to play games with the safeties. Morgan Burnett, uh, good, good vet, uh, savvy safety back deep and also uh, Demarius Randall who also can uh, serve as a free safety uh, at times because he has really good instincts, good range and definitely has the ball skills. But I like him right here depending on what they want to do as far as a quick pass is concerned. He's great at robbing uh, plays and, and picking off the football. So you can play games with him, but let's just look at what they have now on the perimeter. They have Denzel Ward, who was an all pro last year as a rookie. They draft Greedy Williams out of LSU, who's a lockdown corner with ball skills. And they have TJ Carey, who's a very good slot receiver. This could be a multitude of guys, but let's just put Carey right there because I like his springs. He has good instincts, good quicks, uh, and really does a good job in mirroring and matching with defender, with receivers, especially inside in the slot. So what can happen here when you have guys that have the ability to lock up on the outside? It looks right now you're in cover one, but really it's gonna be cover two, two man under. So we're gonna play, you know, man coverage with two defenders back deep. But again, it looks like it's cover one. It looks like everybody's coming, but you're really manned up here. You're manned up here. And you're manned up here. You trust your talent, your personnel to match up, especially on the outside. When you have a Denzel Ward and a Greedy Williams guys that can lock up receivers and also pick the ball off, it makes your options very tough as a quarterback. You have to be decisive and you have to be both accurate and anticipatory. And that's very tough to have all three when you're getting pressure from what the Browns potentially have with their front four. So what we're going to do is going to we're going to send OB right across the face of that tackle shooting inside speed can dis can be disruptive as much as the length and i like that as as well about his game he's a really good player ogan joby's going inside i'm a big fan of uh double a gap pressure because it can influence a double team so sheldon richardson with this quickness and explosiveness off the ball going inside we know miles garrett and what he can do coming on the edge now here's where we get creative because again it looks like janard avery is coming off the edge uh, and he is. So what we're going to do as the cadence starts to wind down, we're just going to walk 
Christian Kirksey over because he has the tight end manned up, and boom, Avery's going off the edge. Don't sleep on his ability to get pressure because I saw him live at Memphis against UConn, and they had him all across the front seven. Sometimes he played with his hand in the dirt. Sometimes he played at the second level, drop back in coverage. I like him in this role situationally. You have Burnett and Randall dropping back deep. So, again, the Browns have a unique opportunity because of their personnel this year to be, again, explosive on offense and defense. And when you have two man corners on the outside that both have ball skills, things can get fun out there in Cleveland, especially in the secondary. We've got a lot of stuff that we've heard about the Browns. Guess what? The Browns are the Browns. And what I mean by that is they are going to be right in between your expectations. So if you expect them to win the Super Bowl, you need to pump the brakes. If you expect them to fail and go 4-12 and because of the Browns, pump the brakes. They're, they're an 8-8, and 9-7 type team, and they're going to have that type of fantasy football impact. Meaning, people were expecting big things out of Baker Mayfield this year. I think that he's going to have a good year, but they're going to consider him a top three fantasy quarterback. At worst, top five. I think he'll end up going, he'll be about the ninth or tenth. I wouldn't be able to draft Baker Mayfield because he's probably going to go in the fifth or sixth round. And I'm not paying that value for him. I wouldn't draft until the eighth round. As far as the running back position, another interesting place. Nick Chubb is going to get a lot of pub because... He's the sole running back in the backfield. Duke Johnson wants out. Well, guess what? I think that early on, he will get it. So if you want to draft him early on, you know, second, third round, go for it. Guess what? Move off of him around week five or six. Because by week 10, he won't be the sole running back. Why I say week five or six? That's usually when you can figure out who you can move him for, who will still be the guy going forward. So if you want to draft him, just look to move Nick Chubb week five, six, maybe seven at the worst, because Kareem Hunt will be on the field and he's just a better football player. It's not close, in my opinion. He'll be the starting running back by the end of season. As far as the receiver position, I mean, they have one of the best receiving cores in the NFL. Odell Beckham is a beast. Jarvis Landry, he's a dog. Antonio Callaway, he's underrated. That might be your best prospect to get because Antonio Callaway, you can probably get him in the 12th round, 13th round, and he'll probably have the second best production on the team when all is told, just because of how talented he is. And that's no slight at Jarvis Landry. It's just, of course, you're going to roll coverage to Odell Beckham Jr. Then you'll put your, you know, a pretty good corner, if not your slot corner, on Jarvis Landry. What do you do with Antonio Callaway? The guy that's going to suffer, in my opinion, is David Njoku, just because that tight end position, I think they'll bully him a little bit. And that's not against him. It's nothing against him, his physicality or anything like that. I think they're going to put him in a box pretty much because they can. And he'll be funneled inside quite a bit. So I don't think he'll get the targets. As far as their defense, I do like the early schedule for their defense. They're playing at home against Tennessee, who's still trying to figure things out. They're at the Jets, who are very slow paced offense, don't score a lot. They do have the Rams at home. But again, you can't have it at all perfect. So I think that having two games that they can keep the team under 20 points is a good start to the season. Troy Anthony here, bringing you the best bets for the Cleveland Browns. The Browns made some big splashes this offseason, acquiring Odell Beckham Jr., Kareem Hunt, Sheldon Richardson. Some have them already winning the division. I'm going to take them at plus 102 to make the playoffs. All of these acquisitions should amount to at least three more wins. Their win line is currently at 9.5 games for the season. At plus 115, I'm taking them over 9.5 games. I also like their week one matchup against the Tennessee Titans. I'm taking them money line, minus 220. I'm Troy Anthony. Follow me on Twitter, at Football Fandom, replacing the O's with zeros. I'm David Hasagan, and this is Huddle Up with Hasagan. We're going to be taking some quick fire takes on the Cleveland Browns. Who are the breakout candidates for this year's Cleveland team? I think you look at wide receiver Antonio Callaway. I know people will mm. focus on uh, Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry, rightfully so. Rashard right. Higgins could be in this discussion as well, but I think Antonio Callaway, with what he showed last year, he's ready for a breakout season, especially being a third receiver, which means he's going to get third coverage. Right. I think he's going to tear that up all season long. Defensively, linebacker Jannard Avery, I think he has a chance to really be 
the quintessential sandbacker in this defense. I like his potential. He had a really good rookie year. He's going to build on that this season. No first round picks for the Browns this year. Who are your impact rookies? I think you look at the rookies on offense, the you know, guys that are undrafted. I, I look at Drew Forbes um, out of Southeast Missouri State. He could play guard or tackle. Um, he's going to be a good versatile depth piece for them. And I think filling the role at either guard or tackle and even some center maybe could help them out find that depth along the offensive line defensively is Greedy Williams. Mm -hmm. First round pick, guy that has ball skills, has lockdown capability. You team him over with last year's first round pick um, and Denzel Ward, you have two ball hawks. I keep making this comparison, but this cornerback duo looks like Hanford Dixon and uh, Frank Minfield, Minifield, who they had last, uh, not last year, but in the 80s and right. early parts of the 90s. That was the two lockdown corners for the Browns. This could be another example of that with Greedy Williams and also uh, Denzel Ward. What are the X factors for a Cleveland Browns team that's actually looking up? Who do you think they are? They need Austin Corbett to really be an X factor. They let Kevin Zeitler go. Uh, he's right. with the New York Giants because they had Colbert, who they drafted last year. They need him to step up and be Zeitler-like along the offensive line. Defensively, bringing in Sheldon Richardson, I thought was an excellent acquisition. I think he is one of the better defensive linemen. He does a good job in impressing the quarterback. He can play across the front. He can occupy uh, occupy a double team. So his versatility will free up a lot on it on that defensive line. Let's talk about some of the surprises you're looking for out of training camp this year in Cleveland. Quarterback Garrett Gilbert, another uh, player, you know, defected from the Alliance of American Football. I thought he played phenomenal football for. Um, Coach Spurrier and the Orlando Apollo. So looking to see how he competes in camp, I think he's going to prove to be the second best quarterback on that roster uh, oh. behind Baker Mayfield. And on defense, JT Hassel, undrafted free agent out of Florida Tech. I had him down at the Tropical Bowl. He was one of the best players down there, defensive player, can play safety, can play linebacker, weak side linebacker. I think it's more of a, of a linebacker in this defense, but a guy that can apply pressure and also is very savvy in coverage as well. A lot of optimism for the Cleveland Browns this year in 2019, but where does the concern line for you? I would say the concern would be if on paper, it doesn't add up. You know, you have on paper, this looks like an AFC championship team. Right. But in practice, if it doesn't mesh well, if they, don't find that Colbert is Zeitler like that's going to be an issue. If Baker Mayfield still has some questions about the turnovers, you know, he threw 14 interceptions. Everyone talks about the touchdowns and breaking Peyton Manning's rookie touchdown record, but no one talks about the 14 interceptions. Mm -hmm. That has to change. Also, if they don't have the uh, the defense that we're expecting them to have, you right. know, you you look on paper, you got Miles Garrett, you got Olivier Vernon, you got some dudes out there up front you got some some ball hawks in the back end in the secondary if the defense just doesn't really take the next step i think that could be a concern for cleveland but optimistically um you like the fact that they do have baker mayfield you like the fact that they do have odell beckham and jarvis landry right. david and joku the tight end they have two great running backs in nick chubb and they will get um uh kareem hunt back later in the season and I hope they keep Duke Johnson because he's a threat too. Right. So they got talent and on defense, they got aggressiveness, they got the ball skills, they got guys that can pressure the quarterback. Slight question at the second level at linebacker, but overall, you have to be optimistic about this Browns team. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here, and joining me now is fellow football game plan analyst Troy Anthony for this Four Downs with the Czar segment, continuing our preview of the Cleveland Browns as we take a look at the road to the Super Bowl for the Browns, starting with what everyone has been talking about, their offense. If this offense on paper can match what potentially it looks like on paper, Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, coming back later in the season, you have Kareem Hunt. You have David Joku from uh, Miami, who's a tight end. You also have Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., Antonio Callaway, Rashad Higgins. I mean, a very good offensive line. The list goes on and on. If this offense can just do what it's expected to do on paper, the Browns, I'm going to be upset if the Browns don't average 35, 30 points a game. If they match this production, we're talking about 99 Rams-like. We're talking about New Orleans Saints under Drew Brees-like. We're talking Rams of last year, like potential. Even Kansas City with their offense, their point of minute offense. On paper, this may be the most explosive offense in the AFC, in my opinion. 
speaking about on paper, since I've watched football within my generation, this team closely resembles what I think of when I think of the Rams back in the day. You got a quarterback who's supposed to be dynamic. You got a rookie running back who s almost like set the team on fire, I'll say last year. Came out, great. You got Odell Beckham on one side, Jarvis Landry on another. Just so many superstars on this team. But what I need to happen is for Baker Mayfield to take the reins and truly demand respect from everybody and show everybody that that is his team because there's a lot of alphas on that team now, especially with the signing of Odell Beckham. You got Jarvis Landry, both, I, would, I don't wanna call him diva receiver because Jarvis hasn't been that much outspoken, mm -hmm. but they're receivers in the NFL. We know what those personalities are like. I need Baker to take the alpha from everybody else and command their respect and know, make them know that this is his team. Baker has a unique opportunity here because you're right, he's one of many alphas on that offense. And in order for all of this to work, people have to be a little bit humble and give up that ability and defer it to a guy like Baker. You know, it, you may not want to hear it at some times, but it, sometimes it, it has to be said. But they have to allow Baker to be the leader of the offense. And if that is able to happen, then that will help the Browns get past this, this negative stigma of always being lovable losers. Because this team potentially could be explosive, one of the more explosive teams in the league. I think on the other side of the ball, defensively, their efficiency has to improve. You talk about talent, you got talent on that side of the ball too. Olivier Verne comes in, join him, Miles Garrett. Sheldon Richardson is on this team. You look in the secondary, Denzel Ward, they drafted Greedy Williams. They have really good safeties in Demarius Randall, and they do a good job of, of being able to uh, turn the ball over. But efficiency is where they lack, hitting off the field on third downs, maybe inside the red zone. They have to be better in certain situations. If their defensive efficiency improves with their playmaking ability, now being able to, to really affect the pocket with the added pressure of, of Vernon and Sheldon Richardson and uh, Ogan Joby up, up front on the interior. You also look at Jannard Avery maybe being more of an impact player on his defense as what he showed last year in, in, in spurts. So if they can improve from an efficiency standpoint, the Browns' defense would be just as explosive as their offense. Yeah, their defense really added a plethora of stars. So did their offense. But even without that, the previous seasons, the Browns have always been in the game. Even though they went 0-16 a few years ago, they've had losing records for the past few years. We don't, do you remember them truly getting blown out by any team? Right. Maybe here, maybe there. It's always been a one score, maybe a 10 point game. They've always been right on the cusp, but now they have all this talent. They have to win these games. They have to finish out these games now, especially in a division in the AFC North where majority of those games are decided by a touchdown or less. There's no excuse to lose by a field goal this year in those games, especially adding all this depth, all this talent. I mean, you talk about that point. You look at last season. If they had a kicker in the first two weeks, the Browns beat out the Ravens for that last playoff spot. Yeah. So that's really how close they were last year to making the playoffs. And you're right, if they can win those close games or turn those close matchups into blowouts on their end, this team not only can make some noise like we saw on paper, uh, we think so on paper, but they can make some noise not only in the AFC, but also in the NFC and find themselves playing deep into the season, maybe into February. I have the Browns finishing second in the AFC North. This team on paper should average 30 to 35 points a game. I think their offense will definitely be very good this year. They can run the football, they can close out games with their running game, and they can also build a lead with their explosive passing attack with the weapons they've added around their franchise quarterback, Baker Mayfield. Defensively, I think they will be able to affect the pocket, get pressure, and they have guys on the back end that can turn the ball over. So I think this team will make the playoffs this year. Last year, I predicted them to win seven or eight games. This year, I think they're going to go 10 and six and get that 10th game toward the end of the season, which will probably get them in to the playoffs. This is going to be a very fun team to watch and a very good team to watch for quite some time. So that's it for this season preview. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes, 
where you can find our NFL All-32 podcast, our fantasy football starting lineup, as well as our scout team podcast and leave us a five-star rating. Also, subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Finally, every Thursday and Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, be sure to check out the Football Game Plan show on the Game Plus Network. Check with your cable provider for channel listings.